Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest. Breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And ding! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Enemy bombers can now reach any part of these United States. A devastating air attack could be launched against us at any moment. To meet this threat, we must have early warning. That's why one million civilian volunteers are desperately needed in the Ground Observer Corps. To meet this threat of a surprise attack, our armed forces and radar network are on the job day and night. But radar has its limitations. Hostile aircraft could sneak through undetected. Our defenses are incomplete without a strong Ground Observer Corps. And one million volunteers, men, women, retired people, and teenagers are desperately needed. Just a few hours a week of your spare time, that's all you need give. Do your part. Contact your civil defense office and join the Ground Observer Corps today. This message is brought to you as a public service. When Sergeant Preston entered the lobby of the Palace Hotel, a slim, black-eyed young man stepped forward and introduced himself. I am Peter Karen, Sergeant. You've been most prompt. I had a message from a Mr. Dimitri. Uh, yes, uh, that is what he chooses to call himself in Dawson. Oh? I shall take you to his room. Uh, up these stairs, please. He chooses to call himself? What's his real name? Dimitri. It's the mister, which is a little misleading. However, a title is of no importance in the Yukon, is it? Could be useful as a means of identification. Well, I'm sure that Mr. Dimitri will identify himself sufficiently. I'm only his secretary. I can't speak for it. Uh, this is the room. The huge black-bearded man who was lying on the bed wore a silk dressing gown. And there was a heavy gold signet ring on the fourth finger of the hand he extended to the sergeant. Sergeant Preston. How do you do? Uh, cheerfully, Sergeant Peter. At once. Your note said your business was urgent, Mr. Dimitri. It is to me, if you please, Sergeant. Oh, thanks. Now then. Yes, how shall I begin? When I came to Dawson, it was with the full expectation that someone would try to murder me. It was with expectation and uh, with hope. You hoped to be killed? <laughs> no, no, no. I hoped that an attempt would be made on my life. You see, there is only one man who would try to kill me up here. And he is a stranger, complete stranger. It is only by his actions that he could reveal himself to me. Why should anyone want to kill you? I shall come to that. First, you should know that the attempt has been made on my life. I can describe him to you. Let's have it. He's about five feet eight or nine, slight of build with graying hair. Tonight he was wearing a gray suit and a hat which was pulled down over his forehead. Still, it was not possible to conceal a scar which ran across his cheek in a saw. If he's in Dawson, we'll find him. Now, you say you can tell me why he wanted to kill him. Yes, he has in his possession a diamond which does not belong to him. He is aware that I am searching for the diamond. You're a detective? <laughs> Let us say 
I am a special agent. Or to say what's in a name, detective or a special agent, you're on the trail of a stolen diamond. That is correct. Then you'd better give me all the details of the theft. It's a very large stone, Sergeant. Nearly 30 carats. It belongs to a beautiful lady of the highest rank who was, um, shall we say, indiscreet in her choice of friends during a recent stay in New York City. Because of this uh, indiscretion, it was impossible for her to appeal to the American police. There would have been grave personal consequences if the loss of the stone had been made public. Therefore, the task of recovering it was placed in my hands. Now, from New York, I traced it to San Francisco. There, I learned through various sources that it had been brought up here. Now, we'll try to find the man who shot it, huh? I'll get started on at once. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, Sergeant. On his return to headquarters, the sergeant wrote out a description of the man with a scar, preparatory to alerting the other members of the force. He had just finished it when the door of his office opened and Constable Downey entered. Sergeant. Oh, yes, Jim. A few men just came in. They reported finding a dead man down near the waterfront. Dead? From natural causes? No, Sergeant. Murdered. Shot through the heart. Any identification? No, they looked through his pockets. They were empty. A slight man wearing a gray suit and hat. Oh? Huh? He had a scar across his left cheek. I'll take charge of the case, Jim. continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, which would you rather do? Read about your favorite baseball team in the papers, or see a game on the screen, or be right in the ballpark, yelling for the players on your team, eating hot dogs, drinking soda pop, and having the time of your life. Golly, nothing beats the fun in the ballpark. Come out to the game now as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate without paying a cent if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult relative. You can now get a free baseball ticket right inside a package of Quaker Pop wheat or Quaker Pop rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Or buy Quaker Paco 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get in on the fun. Right away, get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker Pop Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Bring the whole family to the ball game. You'll all have a picnic. Now to continue. Bill Caldwell, the mate of the Margaret O., and an old friend of the sergeant's, was one of the two men who had reported the murder. The other was a young American called Tom Conlon. The sergeant started for the waterfront with them at once, and King, who had been waiting outside headquarters for his master, trotted along beside them. Now then, Bill, how'd you happen to find the body? Well, young Conlon and I were sitting on the wharf. We were just talking of this and that, but all of a sudden we heard a shot. It seemed to come from between the Yukon Company warehouse and the one next to it. Oh? Both of us figured it was a shot right off, didn't we, Tom? That's right. So we decided to investigate, and we found the body. How long ago was this? Only a few minutes ago. I made sure the man was dead, and Tom took a look through his pockets. Why did you do that, Conan? Well, neither of us recognized the man, Sergeant. We thought there might be some papers or perhaps a wallet. They shouldn't have been touched. Well, there was nothing in his pockets, Sergeant, nothing at all. We didn't move the body. It's lying right where we found it. I uh, called one of my boys to keep watch over it while we came for you. See anyone around, Bill? Anyone who might have fired the shot? Well, I... I uh, hesitate to say this, Sergeant. It's either yes or no. Well, yes, I did see someone. As we turned in between the buildings, I saw a man at the far end, uh, crossing Front Street. Can you describe him? Well, I... Uh, I think I know who it was, Sergeant. There was only the moonlight. And I'm not sure. Who do you think it was? Ben Rafferty. I don't recognize the name. Well, he's new. He was one of our passengers on the last trip. Oh. Just landed the other day. Uh, Tom knows him. Well, I'm not a friend of his, but I was on the Margaret O, too. Did you see him tonight? I'm no sure than Billy. It could have been that. Uh, he's a big man with red hair, Sergeant. Uh, if you want to question him, he shouldn't be hard to find. Why didn't you follow him? Well, we hadn't found the dead man when we saw him. Afterwards, we did take a look up and down Front Street. Disappeared. Hmm. Well, this is the Yukon warehouse. Between this building and the next one? Yeah. And here we are. 
straight down towards the river. There's Jack, and you can see the dead man lying on the ground. After the coroner's examination, the dead man was moved to headquarters, and Dimitri was called from the Palace Hotel to view the body. This is the man who fired a shot at you earlier this evening? Yes, Sergeant, it is. <clears throat> the diamond, what of the diamond? There was nothing in his pockets when I found him. Then the man who killed him must have the diamond. We're looking for the murderer. You may be able to help us find him. Why, I do not see how. You'd better tell me everything you learned from your various sources in San Francisco. Uh, about the diamond? About the men who might have it. Well, by the time it reached San Francisco, it was in the hands of a well-organized band of jewel thieves. One of their number was sent up here to dispose of it. This man. What's his name? Oh, he had many aliases. Scar Milano, for one. What about the other members of the gang? According to my information, only one man was sent up here. His Confederates must have trusted this Milano a great deal. You, uh, you believe they had him followed? Why not? If only to make sure he didn't double-cross them. Hmm, I see your point. For instance, Ben Rafferty. Who's he? Big Red. You've heard of him? Yes, I have. Another member of the gang? No, not of the same one. He's a member of a rival gang. Well, Ben Rafferty, or Big Red, as you call him... Was seen near the warehouse where Milano was killed. So, then he has the diamond. We're looking for him. I'd like to check our description with you. Red hair, powerful man. That is all I can tell you. He isn't registered at any of the hotels. Do you know of any friends he might have in Dawson? No, Sergeant. Yes? I have another witness who thinks he can identify the body. Send him in, Constable. That will be all, Dimitri. Thank you, Sergeant. Well, excuse me, please. Sure thing. Uh, howdy, Sergeant. Oh, Mike Wilson. Is, uh, is that his body underneath the blanket? Yes, Mike. Uh, do you know him? Yeah, I do. His name is Miller. Another alias. Did you just happen to meet him around town? Well, he's been living with me for the past two weeks over in Shantytown. But I never knew him before. I was talking to him one night in Monte Carlo and... He wanted to move out of the hotel, and I suggested my place. Strange little man, Sergeant. He, he acted as if he was afraid of something all the time. He had good reason. Yeah? He, he was a crook, huh? Evidently. Well, I'm sure you're on the right track, hunting for the big man with red hair. Why, Mike? Miller was afraid of him, all right. He caught a glimpse of him last night. It was in the Monte Carlo again. Miller insisted on leaving at once for the back door. Any idea of where we can find Rafferty? That's the redhead? Yes. Well, I saw him earlier this evening. A number of people have. Yeah, he, he was with Barrett. Barrett? Do you know Barrett? That phony Englishman, Mucklock Jackson, hired to act as his butler oh. when he built his mansion down the river? Of course, but Mucklock's gone to the States. Barrett living in town now? No. He's still living in the big place. All by himself. A caretaker, sort of. He may not be all by himself if he and Rafferty are friends. Thanks, Mike. This is the best lead we have. I'm going to follow it myself. Jim, Mike's given me a lead on Rafferty. But, Sergeant, he might have only been passing the time of day with Barrett. It's worth investigating. Barrett's the caretaker of the Jackson House downriver, Jim. I'll see if Rafferty's there and question Barrett. Hold the fort till I get back. Right, Sergeant. Come on, King. Round to the stables, boy. We're going somewhere. As the sergeant turned the corner of the headquarters building, a rider raced past him. Why, King, that looked like Dimitri. Wonder where he's headed so fast. The more I see of him, fella, the less I trust him. Well, finding Rafferty's our first job, boy. Come on. <laughs> Mucklock Jackson was the freest spender of all the Bonanza millionaires. And the great white house he had built downriver from Dawson was one of the show places of the Yukon. The furnishings had been shipped all the way from New York, and Mucklock had spared no expense. When he was in residence, there was a party every night, and every window blazed with light. Now the house was dark and seemed deserted. But there was a saddled horse hitched to a tree near the entrance. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Following Dimitri King, I'm sure that's the horse he was riding. Did he? Don't you like the looks of the place, boy? Uh, here's someone coming. Yeah, 
Yes. Why, it's Sergeant Preston. Your name is Barrett. Quite correct, Sergeant. Mr. Jackson's caretaker. But if you're looking for him... I'm not. Then may I ask... A my... few questions, Barrett. May I come in? Of course. Thank you. But please, not your dog. His paws are muddy. The rugs, he'd ruin them. Oh, very well. You stay out here, King. <laughs> this way, Sergeant. The small parlor. This is about the only room I use when I'm all alone. Are you all alone? Please sit down. Yes. Yes, I'm quite alone. What about Mr. Dimitri? Dimitri? His horse is outside. I oh, know, Sergeant. You're mistaken. That's my horse. I was just about to ride to Dawson. Perhaps you'll ride with me. I'll answer your questions on the way. I prefer asking them here. As you wish. I concern a man named Rafferty. I don't know the name. You were seen talking with him this evening in Dawson. Well, one talks to many people in Dawson. He's very large, with red hair. Oh, yes, I do remember such a person. I only spoke to him for a few moments. I had no idea what his name was. And you've never heard of a Mr. Dimitri? Never. But that yell should refresh your memory. Sergeant, Let's see I... if you have a gun. I know. All right, march ahead of me into the next room. Hurry, open that door. In the next room, Dimitri and Ben Rafferty were rolling on the floor, struggling for the possession of a gun. Quickly, the sergeant moved in and grabbed him. That's enough. Now stand up, both of you. Your name, Rafferty? Uh, yeah. You're under arrest. What for? Suspicion of murder. Sergeant, you... You saved my life. He was holding a gun on me. But he turned his head to listen to what you were saying in the next room. I took my chance. I'd like to know how you happen to be here, Dimitri. I, I should not have come. I should have told you my suspicions. What suspicions? That Big Red might be here. It is well known in San Francisco that this Barrett used to be a member of his gang. You know, the more you talk about the San Francisco underworld, the more certain I am that you've been personally connected with it. Uh, what do you mean by that? He's got you tagged, Count. Be quiet. Why should I be? You're absolutely right, Sergeant. This is Count Charlie, one of the slickest confidence men on the coast. Oh? He's up here for the same reason I am. To get the princess's diamonds. Only he uses different methods than I do. I'm beginning to understand them. His plan was to let the Northwest Mounted Police recover the diamond, then get possession of it to forge papers. Yeah, maybe so. Well, your method was murder. Listen, Milano stole the diamond from me down in Frisco. I only wanted to get it back. He pulled a gun on me first. I shot in self-defense. You're under arrest, and anything you say may be taken down and used as evidence against you. Where is the diamond? In the safe in the next room. I'll get it for you, Sergeant. I was dragged into this deal. I wanted no part of it. Believe me. It was only the... Sergeant, look out! Peter, get him! (coughs) Peter Karen had appeared in the doorway leading to the front parlor. Before the sergeant could act on Barrett's shouted warning, the barrel of Karen's gun crashed down on the side of the sergeant's head, and he crumpled to the floor. Peter waved his pistol menacingly at Rafferty and Barrett as Dimitri, alias Count Charlie, ran forward to pick up the sergeant's gun. Good work, Peter. How did you happen to be here? I saw the sergeant heading his way. Just followed him on the hunch. Ordinarily, I do not approve of strong-arm tactics, but I am happy you are so good at them. What happens now? First, we shall bind and gag the sergeant and Rafferty. Then Barrett will open the safe for us and give us the diamond. What about afterwards? I heard the sergeant talking. He will do no more talking. Leave it to me. But first, the curtain ropes to bind them. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Hey, ball! <laughs> Say, have you had the thrill lately of being right there in the ballpark when the leadoff man steps up to the plate? Have you been there to see the star players in person? See them wallop home runs? See the exciting double plays? Well, don't miss the fun another day. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. Yes, you can get a free baseball ticket. No mailing, no waiting. It's right inside a package of Quaker Pop wheat or Quaker Pop rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Or buy Quaker Paco 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry to get your free baseball ticket in the special package of Quaker Pop Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10.
Now to continue. King had barked a little when Peter Karen rode up and entered the house. But he had no reason to distrust the man and no reason to try and stop him. However, at the very moment when Karen's gun came down on the sergeant's head, King leaped to his feet and hurled himself at the front door. He realized at once there was no way he could force it open and ran down from the porch and circled the house. There were no windows open at the side, and he continued onto the porch at the rear of the building. One of the windows that opened off it was raised about a foot. King was able to stick his head inside. He tensed the muscles of his neck and pushed up. The window opened a few more inches. King wriggled through. The room he found himself in was a large pantry. There was a man on the floor, bound and gagged. King ran past him to the closed door. He stood against the door jamb and tried to turn the knob with his mouth. It was impossible to get a grip on it. He turned back to the man on the floor. It was the young American, Tom Conlon, who had been with the sergeant when they found the dead man earlier that night. He might not be an old friend of the sergeant's, but at least he was no enemy, and King needed help. The great dog started to chew the ropes that bound his hands. A few minutes later, the ropes around the man's wrist parted, reached up to his mouth, and tore off the gag. Are you your king? If you're here, the sergeant must be, too. Luckier than I have any right to be. Just wait until I get these ropes off my feet, and I'll open the door for you, King. <laughs> Tom Conlon worked fast. The last knot was untied, and he stood up. You better be quiet, King. The pantry opened into the kitchen. King ran across the room to the door that led to the center hall. Now, wait a minute, King. I want a knife. Better than no weapon at all. This one will do. All right, King. Lead me to the side. <laughs> King ran down the hall of the second door and scratched up. I'm here, King. I can hear voices in the front room. All right, boy. I'll take your word for it. As the door opened, Conlon saw the sergeant lying on the floor, bound and gagged. Rafferty lay beside him. King ran to his master, and a moment later, Conlon had removed the gag and started cutting the cords on his wrist. Conlon, don't tell me you're a member of the thieves, Congress. No, sergeant. I'm a private detective. That's the story Dimitri told me. I have credentials. I've been after the X-Diamond for six months. X-Diamond? There you are. Yeah, that's the only name I have for it. I'm just an operative, and I have no idea who the firm's client is. Now the diamonds in the next room, Dimitri and Karen are forcing Barrett to open the safe. I'll go after them as soon as I can get some circulation back in my hands. How do you happen to be here? I knew that Barrett was an old friend of Rafferty's. I thought Rafferty and the diamond might Why be... Why didn't you tell me that? My orders have been to keep the police out of the case, if possible. With murder involved? Uh, I know, I know. I made a mistake, and I nearly paid for it with my life. I crawled in through a back window and found myself staring into the muzzle of Rafferty's gun. For some reason, they didn't kill me. They just tied me up and threw me into a pantry. Your dog came in through the window and chewed through the ropes on my hands. And then he led me to you. It was Dimitri and Karen who captured you? Yes, Karen slugged me from behind. Uh, well, at least they tied Rafferty up so he couldn't make any trouble. Let's go. Neither of us is armed, Sergeant. This knife isn't much use against a gun. Surprise is our only chance. Can you help? Come on, boy. Silently, the sergeant moved toward the door of the front parlor, with King at his side and Conlon directly behind him. Carefully, the sergeant opened the door a crack, just enough Quick, to see sir. and hear. I'm not stalling. My fingers are trembling. I must have turned the dial a little too far before. It had better open this time. It will. There. Now open it. That is better. Now the dial. It's in the oiled silk envelope. Hand it to me. Here. Keep him covered, Peter. This is our chance, Condon. Dimitri put his gun down to examine the diamond just back toward us. So is Karen. I think I can reach Karen and grab his gun before he can use it. You take care of Dimitri. Right. I don't think Barrett will make any trouble. The king will guard him. Let's go. I'll take that gun. Oh, uh, you are choking me. I have his gun, too. As the sergeant and Conlon burst into the room, Barrett made a break for the front door. But King drove him into a corner and held him there, growling a warning not to move. All right, King. We have him covered, boy. Get over there with Barrett, Karen. You too, Dimitri. You heard him. All right, all That's right. That's better. Now, as soon as we tie your hands behind your backs, we'll march you three and Rafferty back to Dawson. You're all under arrest in the name of the Crown. Sergeant, I want to testify against these men. 
As soon as they got the diamond, they were going to kill you and me and Rafferty and throw us into the river. You'll get your chance to testify, but you'll go to jail with the rest of them. Malconnan, there's the diamond. Ah, the end of a long trail for me. Not quite the end. The diamond will remain in the custody of the Northwest Mounted Police until we're authorized to release it. The firm will take care of that. My work is finished, Sergeant. A good night's work for all of us, especially for you, King. The case is closed, boy. Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. There's roaring adventure on Mutual. Tales that will take your breath away and transport you into lands where danger is your constant companion. First, we take you far up into the barren Yukon territory of yesterday, where icy winds and howling wolves are enough to drive a man wild, and civilized ways are gone in an ever-present lust for gold. Now let's go to another lawless world, the west of early frontier days. Not so cold, but which makes up for the freezing temperatures with trigger-tense tempers, where the gun is a man's lease on life. This is a country which abounds with cattle rustlers and where miles and miles go by before you see any signs of life. The West, beautiful but wild, a land which cries out for the hand of the law. You will never lack for adventure on Mutual, whether it freezes you with fear in the wild Northwest Territory or singes you with the acrid heat of the Western Plains. It's all on Mutual every week over most of these stations. And now, Sergeant Preston reports to the inspector at Northwest Mounted Headquarters in Dawson. You sent for me, Inspector? Yes, Sergeant. Tom Barry has escaped from prison. Escaped? But Tom wanted to stand trial. He was confident he could prove his innocence. A jailbreak arranged by a killer in order to get at the only man who could send him to the gallows. This is the situation the sergeant faces. Tom Barry, he feels, is innocent. And Lewis Coe is guilty. Barry must be Coe's prisoner. But how long can the innocent man hope to live in the hands of such a ruthless killer? Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. The delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle. Produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. And directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. <laughs> <laughs>